Um, today we will be talking about securing your Postgres data. Uh, and uh, I'm delighted to speak at scale uh, for the first time in my life, so it's all new for me. Uh, that's a huge conference, and there are people of whom I usually do not meet at the conferences, so thank you everybody who is uh, at my talk for the first time. So um, I'm Hetty. Uh, do not bother about last name. There is only one Hetty in Postgres. Google Hetty Postgres. You will know uh, everything about me more than probably I want to know. So there will be plenty of information. So I'm Hetty on LinkedIn, Hetty on GitHub, and Hetty everywhere. Uh, so I've been uh, doing lots of stuff uh, with databases in general and Postgres specifically. Um, and at the moment, um, I'm a database architect uh, at the DRW Holdings in Chicago. They said they are going to change my title because nobody knows what architects does, and rumors are that data architects do not do anything, which is not the case in my case. Uh, but um, anyway, at the moment, I am a database architect. So um, more important title, which I hold longer than any of my job titles, I am the local organizer of the Chicago PostgreSQL user group. Uh, and so I'm leading this group uh, since um, December um, uh, 2016. Uh, and um, I did not check recently at some point it was second largest user group in the Western Hemisphere. I think there are more a larger group now, but um, I am happy that I led this group through pandemic. Uh, we actually continued to, um, we switched on, uh, to Zoom in April 2020, so I missed just one meetup. And since then we are meeting both uh, virtually and uh, in person. Um, and uh, during pandemic, I promised that uh, I will always live stream my meetups when they will return to be in person, and I still do. So if you are interested, uh, we are meeting once a month. So um, go to Meetup and find Chicago PostgreSQL user group, and um, I will always uh, you know, have a link to our Zoom version of Meetup. So even if you are not in Chicago, you can join me virtually. Um, and uh, another very important thing I'm doing uh, in my life is um, I'm uh, the um, uh, operations, uh, part of operations committee of PG Day Chicago. And uh, that is, by the way, only the second PG Day in the United States. I was shocked when I learned it because there are so many PG Days in Europe. And uh, like, so there are only two legit PG Days in the United States, uh, PG Conf New York and PG Day Chicago. It is happening now for the uh, second time. Uh, and so far, it's a one-day conference. Uh, so please support it because uh, if I will meet the goal uh, for this year, then hopefully next year I will be given two days conference. So I still need sponsors. I still need participants. Registration is open. It's still like plenty of time. If you can do even like small sponsorship, please sign up. If you want to attend, please sign up. Uh, I, uh, now the program is awesome. So check our website. Uh, it's like a great program, uh, free tracks. Uh, and I returned it back to Chicago Loop. So at least you are not looking at, oh my gosh, I do not want to look at the windows. You will look at all the like, best of Chicago from the windows if you are not looking at what people are presenting. Uh, so please come and join me. Okay? Uh, so uh, why this talk? Uh, so for those who know me, uh, I'm all about performance. I'm like uh, performance, uh, like whatever, they're saying performance queen, whatever, like well, this Russian lady who comes and like, you know, um, like tell, tells uh, people like how things should work. Uh, so anyway, uh, normally I'm doing talks about performance and about my uh, projects. Uh, I have several open source projects which I love. So that is my first security talk. So why I'm talking all of a sudden about security, I never did before. So before I will go with official slide, here is an official story. Um, at some point uh, during my employment with DRW Holdings, I had to automate security settings, which all this talk will be about. And when I started to convert databases from disaster to proper security, I found so many issues with how Postgres is doing security. I was like shocked. I wrote a blog post, and it was like, um, you know, 
it was not a WordPress discussion, it was like Facebook style discussion. People became very angry, people were writing long responses to me, so that was a disaster, and then I'm like, okay, I need uh, to let the world know. And I started to submit this talk, and I got rejected, rejected, rejected. Um, so um, I talked to my friend Leticia Avro, like, I got rejected for the fifth time, what's wrong? Like, how I can let the world know what I think? because otherwise nobody will listen to me. And she said, uh, you know what, first of all, you do not call the talk what is wrong with Postgres, because everybody will get like, upset and like, okay, uh, <laughs> it is something which is wrong with Postgres, so how you want me to <laughs> do this? And she said, okay, you know what, uh, like, use ChatGPT, that's what I do with all my talk descriptions, and you will get accepted. I'm like, no, nah. ChatGPT is not me. Everybody will see it's not me. Like, try, try. So I tried, so ChatGPT, replied something like, oh my gosh, that's not me. No, I'm not doing it. And I thought for a couple of days, okay, I will take ChatGPT version, I will make it look like me, and this one got accepted. So that is ChatGPT plus Hetty, okay? Uh, so finally, I have a chance to talk about what I wanted to talk for like, you know, for a whole year, okay? So uh, now official version, why I'm doing this talk. Um, so uh, <laughs> we live in <laughs> the time of uh, age of data breaches, and I do not even need to enumerate any recent ones because everybody knows. Uh, like uh, everybody heard, many of you have been like a victim of data breach, so we know, right? So uh, and uh, so securing data is high priority. Like anywhere here, we have the whole track about security. By the way, they did not get, uh, they did not accept my talk. Postgres accepted my talk. The track, uh, and the security track on scale said it's not important. You know why they said it's not important? Because they believe that only thing you need to do, you need to secure your network, you need to secure it from intruders from outside. From inside, the moment you get into your super secured network, you can do everything because nobody protects data on the database level, okay? And by the way, Postgres has everything. So you look at any other database system, Postgres has the most uh, like sophisticated, most flexible system to provide uh, the permissions uh, in very uh, fine granularity exactly what you need. Postgres has it all. Still, you know what happens in real life, not in theory, not when the contributors tell us over oh, the draw level security. So you know what happen, happens in real life, right? Who knows what happens in real life? It's interactive. Who knows what happens in real life? Hmm? No, that's what happens in real life. <laughs> like, like production applications, you know what? My internal customers come to me, we need to install this application, we just paid tons of money. I'm like, I cannot install it because it's like this. But yeah, that's, they require, they require super user, they require public schema. Okay, so, and um, you know why it happens? There is a reason why it happens. There is a reason no matter how hard we try, this happens, and I will tell you why. So. Um, and um, just to start, what will be covered? So we will uh, go through most important security challenges, which is like what I said yesterday. I want this to be part of Postgres, not Haiti's things in Postgres. Um, and uh, we will, uh, like, I will explain the necessity of standardizing approach. Uh, and um, I will show the security models which we adopted in uh, DRW Holdings and how we use automation and what is next, what I'm trying to achieve except for making half of it part of Postgres, okay? So, uh, the reason why it's still a public schema user Postgres. Uh, there are several challenges. First challenge is uh, you do not need to have any security to start working with Postgres. So Postgres has very low entrance barrier, right? We know, because nobody needs to learn Postgres. You get it, you install it, open source, and then maybe you start reading documentation. But for the moment, you install it locally, you are automatically connected as Postgres, you are automatically like with, within public schema, go, okay. Uh, and uh, if you decide to look at documentation, that's the uh, table of contents of documentation. Anywhere, anything about roles, users, permissions. Tell me, do you know where is it? I know actually where is it. It's like nothing, right? When, remember, okay, 
most of us have been with Oracle at some point of our career. Let's be honest. Let's admit it. So you, re remember when you start with Oracle, you do this caught tiger thingy. You cannot be like nobody, right? Mm, you can be nobody or you can be everybody. You can be super user in Postgres. So I will tell you way in documentation, like the first word about privileges appear in the middle. Right? So you are done through what is Postgres, how to use it, quick start, everything, all of a sudden. Oh, now we can talk about users. And uh, if you click on this, do you see where privileges are? Not in the beginning, right here. So you're kind of like, you already stopped reading documentation because you did quick start, you know how to do everything. Ha, there, there's it. And the most alarming thing. So you know how happy I was when, uh, Magnus just announced that uh, the special status of public schema is removed in Postgres 15. Still, still, in 15, in 16, <laughs> all examples in documentation are from public schema. Like, like, look through it. Like, nobody ever mentioned you can create something other than a public schema. Goes by default. So, uh, then we have hard time telling users that that is wrong. You know, I heard like, you know, users like, okay, you just told us the schemas exist we did not know before. Like, seriously, I'm not even kidding. Um, so, so that was challenge number one. So, as a result, what happens? Uh, yeah. So applications are developed using Postgres user because it's easier. When they go to production, uh, they don't have time because like it's deadline, it's deployment, and you know, we will lose money if we won't deploy it today. You know, no matter how long you develop, but we cannot do anything, okay? Then the other thing, like for some reason, whoever uh, designs, like contributes to Postgres, they forget that in real life there are no users typing, there are applications using connection pools. So forget about role, role security, whatever. Everybody are connected using the same user. And how often this user is Postgres? More than you want to know. So, um, yeah, uh, as the same database user. So, challenge number two, <laughs> the wonders of inheritance. Uh, so, uh, we did it. We did it a long time ago. Actually, you know, yesterday was the conversation who started when I was still there at 7.3. I remember when we moved to it. So the uh, difference between groups and users was eliminated in 7.3 because now we have every, everything is a role. So now user is a role with login and we can grant anything to anything anybody to anybody. So if we create role one, then uh, that will be role, no login role. We create role two um, uh, with login, so that is a user, that's okay. Uh, we create user one is the same as role with password, so that's same role. So now all of these grants will work, Postgres does not see anything wrong with this, so you grant role one to a user. You grant one user to other user. By the way, forget you uh, secured this user with password. You granted this user. So another user does not need to know this password. You go. And uh, at the end, wonders of inheritance. You create another role uh, and you uh, grant this role to role one. And when you grant, you do not know who else uh, owns this role one. Who else has it? So everybody will grant uh, will receive this grant. Everybody who have role one will have also role three. And uh, when you will grant permissions to role three, everything will go up and uh, you do not even uh, like know what will happen. Okay? So, uh, you know, it uh, creates total security hazard like in two steps. Two steps is enough to create total security hazard in your database. Uh, like uh, the one uh, horrible thing I had in real life, uh, not like recently, but uh, <laughs> accidentally everybody, say like public was uh, granted a super user. <laughs> like by the, uh, like by ways of multiple inheritance. So, uh, so another thing which for some reason, okay, people who work with Postgres professionally know, but for some reason everybody forget. People think that user is created for database because you are connected to a database and you create user. And you do not create it for the database. 
because users are created on instance level. And I cannot tell you how many times people say, we want this in separate database. i like, why? For security reasons. Because there is no security. Any user you create have automatically connect uh, permission to the new database. And yes, you can explicitly remove it. But when you create another database, it will again, you need to know <laughs> what to remove. So you need to know from which users you want to remove access. So uh, you create a user, by default, they have access. So uh, they have connect. Uh, and uh, if uh, you have public anybody from any database, uh, anybody can create anything in public schema of any of other databases. Uh, and um, also, sometimes you say, we need super user because of whatever. So if you made this mistake, this super user can do anything in all databases on this instance. So hello, no, no security here. Okay. Now, um, we actually know how to do things the right way. And until I started with DRW Holdings, I thought I know how to do things the right way. Because uh, when people know that uh, we need to use schemas as units of security, we need to have an owner of the schema, we need to have roles, we are not granting privileges to users directly, we create a role which holds the privileges. And so uh, what I'm going to demonstrate now, it is like written in many, many blog posts, not in Postgres documentation because we are flexible, but uh, like um, any blog post from anybody who like tries to do it the right way, you will find something like this. Using schema and uh, granting roles to users. So you will have something like this. You create a schema owned by owner role. You grant this role to a user. You create read-write role and uh, you create read-only role, and you operate like this. So that's like not new, that's not had invented, it, it had been around for a very long time. Okay, uh, now, and what you do, you grant select on all tables to orders read-only, you grant uh, select and set update delete to tables, um, on all tables uh, to orders read-write. So, what won't work? What won't work? It's interactive. Uh, uh, truncate, yes, no, but uh, not only. What else? Truncate, yes, thank you. What else? What else will not work? Hey. Appli any application developers here? <laughs> what, what? Thank you, thank you. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, so, yes, uh, the fault privilege challenge. And by the way, one thing uh, everybody forgets here, grant usage, because, uh, like, I still uh, need to understand why it has to be grant usage, but when you grant read, write, whatever, things do not work. Um, and then, yeah, you need to define default privileges because the previous grant, uh, this one which we had here, okay? Uh, uh, so here, we only granted permissions to tables which were already in the schema. So if we just created the schema, it's nothing. So we need to do default privileges, okay? So, um, default privileges. Out of default privilege in schema orders, grant select on tables to read user, grant everything else to read write. Uh, and uh, this should be okay because now what we are saying, any table which we create and views, by the way, views are also tables in this situation, um, read user will have select, write user will have everything. So, uh, and remember we created role, we created user, so all good, right? So user, there is a user who can create tables. Okay. We create a table. By default permission is not applied. It's interactive. By default permission is not applied. You create a table that are not applied. Why? Right. Uh, okay. Uh, because, yes? Uh -huh. All tables. Uh, uh, no. No, all, no, no, all tables is all good. No, it's not, it's, uh, I, created, uh, I created a table. So remember, I had the owner user, uh, owner all. I did alter. So I'm admin who can create. I create table default uh, privileges are not applied. You know why? Right? 
А? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, what matters is that you need uh, to grant default privileges not to whatever, but for specific user. Because if you uh, issue this alter default privileges, you know to whom it will alter default privileges? To the user who was doing this. So if you were a database owner when you did the Salter schema, it will grant to Postgres to whoever, not to whom you intended. Okay. So now, yes, that's what you need to do. You need to alter default privileges for the schema owner because you want them to be kind of like encapsulated on this database owner. Uh, this actually leads to other situation because if you are now admin user, you need to explicitly switch to this role because otherwise you can create table, but uh, default privileges won't be applied as well. Uh, so there are like two things which can go wrong here. All right. Wonders of ownership. That's the thing which blows mind for everybody who comes from Oracle. So we own schema, right? Create schema orders on uh, orders on. So this is created by default. So you do not do this grant all on schema orders to orders on. It is Im uh, implicitly granted when you create the schema. So this uh, role, um, orders on, can create all objects, uh, grant, uh, has all select, insert, uh, update, delete, truncate, whatever. So now, uh, and I face it all the time when like, people, oh my gosh, uh, we actually need to redo security. If you do, uh, alter schema orders owner to uh, new orders owner. Who knows what will happen with permissions? Anybody knows? Anybody tried it? Who knows what happens with permissions? Okay, the answer is nothing happens with permissions, like literally nothing. So the schema, the schema will change the owner, but the old owner will still have all set of privileges. So in order to switch the owner, what you need to do? You need to revoke everything from the previous owner. You need to read catalog, go through all the objects. You need to switch an owner. And yes, the, there is a um, reassign command, reassign all it does ownership, it does nothing with privileges. So you need to explicitly revoke all the default privileges, grant new default privilege. So it's a huge project. So like one of my asks is why we, if we want to be flexible, why at least we won't allow some flag, okay? uh, like switch ownerships, like cascade or something like this, because that is a huge project if you have lots of objects in the schema. So, and uh, lots of other things. Uh, and I can talk like the whole hour about all other weird things, uh, but uh, like just a cu couple of things, okay? Um, for example, okay, so you uh, granted select uh, on the table to a role. Uh, then you grant insert, update, delete on the same table to another role. You create user, you grant uh, this role two to user one. So now user um, one can update, uh, insert, update, delete. So then offices, actually we do not want uh, this user to do delete. Uh, what will happen if you revoke delete? Who knows what happens? Yes, correct. It does not do anything. It does not do anything because we never granted delete. We granted a role which has delete. Delete as a separate privilege was never granted. But do you think Postgres tells you you are doing something wrong? It does not. Not all it will not work. There will be no error. So you execute revoke. It will set, eh, yes. Revoked, 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 and then this user can delete. So that's like one thing I reported long time ago, and that's like what I was referring to. Yeah, that's probably wrong, but we have like 120 other things which we need to address. So if you revoke permission, which you did not grant it, or nobody granted, it would not tell that no, this is wrong. It revoked, all good. 
Uh, so, and also, if you grant the same permission multiple times, the only time when it will report, or you already have it, is when you grant um, the existing role one more time. Okay. Then, in addition, other challenges. Uh, you cannot drop the user um, which has uh, any privileges. So it, it, it's a mistake, right? Uh, it will error, and uh, like you cannot drop this user. You cannot drop user cascade, because you know with all other things you can drop user cascade, you cannot drop user cascade. So uh, it will no, you need to revoke all privileges explicitly. And remember, they ca can be in different database. No? Uh, and uh, most interesting, there is no easy way to tell uh, which permissions this user has. Like, trust me, because uh, I uh, wrote a function which lists all the privileges for the user. This function is like about 100 lines long, and other people who try to do the same, they kind of uh, end up in about 100 lines of code, just to list all privileges for one user. So, okay. Now, it's all OK uh, when you have uh, several databases, OK? So I have 280 approximately, we are not sure how many we have in organization, but something along that lines. And uh, we have a team of, um, okay, we have a team of very little number of people, because also Postgres is not our only and not even our most uh, often used database in our organization. And we have total DBA team of uh, uh, 14 people, uh, like for all databases. Um, and again, Postgres is just one and not the biggest. Uh, so. What we're going to do? First of all, I work in trading. And in trading, people are super secretive. They want them to be isolated. As we already know, databases, uh, separate databases would not help. Separate instance for each project, I had internal customer who requested a new instance literally for each new pair of tables because they wanted to be separated. So that uh, also kind of expensive, even for trading. Uh, so, what are other approaches? So, that's kind of like what led me to uh, developing this security framework. Again, uh, why I'm talking about these 280 uh, instances? So, there is no room for error. Previously, I could say, hey, you know what? You did not switch to correct role. I'm sorry, you need to start in your. I cannot tell it to owners of 280 databases. So I need to uh, have some automation which does not allow anything like right and left. Okay? So uh, here is my security model. So um, it's kind of like not really open source. So uh, I only will show the pieces of code. So I will try to show ideas rather than uh, how it is done. So if you want like more clarification, I will try, uh, please like stop me, uh, but uh, like um, just telling you it's not exactly pieces of code, it's more like what we did. Okay. So what are basic principles? So first of all, principle of least privileges, that's like uh, principle of uh, any security settings. Uh, so user is given minimal level of access needed to perform their actions. So if you do not need something, you do not have this. Only exactly what you need, not more. Uh, second is durability, which means it's like uh, we tried. Uh, again, I, um, I promise to take a, a person who will break it out to fancy restaurant if they will break. So, so far, nobody broke it. Uh, uh, because I, like, I challenged my DBA team to try to break it without being a super user. So it's pretty much unbreakable. Um, and uh, flexibility, because um, different customers have different needs in uh, like securing their data. So I was struggling with different package versions. So the um, version which I have now is flexible. So just using two flags there, I can uh, satisfy pretty much everybody's security and permission needs. Uh, now, what are the key features, how it works? So first of all, again, that's my big ask of Postgres, Postgres, I, I do not want to create event triggers for this. I uh, actually want it to be kind of, uh, you know, you, uh, you should be able to set this up 
in Postgres. Um, but now I have an event trigger which switches permissions when object is created. Uh, so pretty much what it does, it uh, forces permissions uh, to be correct um, in the correct schema. Uh, then um, I have security level matrix, and I will go through this matrix like in a second. Uh, security is on the database level. So not on instance level, on each database you set security package and you can set your security level on each database. Um, and uh, how it is all executed, I have a set of uh, security definer functions uh, which do everything instead of user issuing commands. So I'm not giving anybody the super user, but um, users can uh, create schemas uh, grant permissions, create users, only through security definer schemas and uh, security definer functions, and uh, they can only execute things which we allow them to execute. Do you want to take care of capture? Yes, 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 I do. Yes. So, uh, enabling, so um, there is a security package which set a function. It is by default installed in each Postgres uh, database, uh, and it is dormant until we explicitly initiate it by uh, setting it up uh, with security metrics. Um, so uh, you cannot change settings after they're set once for the database, otherwise, uh, yeah, it's like, <laughs> uh, it'll be bad. Um, so there is like one function which a Postgres user uh, executes, uh, grants create schema users, and it uses permission settings, which I will show on the next slide. The permission settings are recorded for this particular database, and uh, if you redeploy this package, because the biggest challenge I have, I made changes in the existing function, so I do not want to break it and start over. So if uh, I already had security set up, uh, the installation script, picks it up and uh, re-implements it. So I do not need uh, to do it. I can redeploy multiple times. So that is the matrix, and um, I will highlight uh, all of them. So uh, we have a uh, schema owner and account owner thingy. So how it, uh, how it all happened? So first uh, was this uh, schema, which I described previously. So database owner owns all the schemas and grants read only or read write. It uh, covers most of the situation. Then one of my internal customers came and said, no, we actually want to be isolated per schema because there are different teams who are creating objects and we want them to know nothing about others. And if you can do this for us without us being creating yet another instance, it would be great. So there comes uh, model number two, schema owner true. Uh, where each schema is owned by separate uh, user. Schemas are still created by admin, but um, this each schema is owned by its own user and gives its own uh, privileges to their like, application user. Then, there's another customer. Okay. Uh, you know what, actually, uh, I want something different. I want two power users, uh, which can, each can create their own schemas, but not knowing anything about each other. So then it was modeled with account owner, and uh, account owner has uh, the schema ownership. And then there was the third, uh, one more user, uh, and they said, we are selling services, so we want to create accounts and these accounts can create their own schemas. And again, they can do everything within their own schemas, but know nothing about each other. So I like said, okay. And uh, <laughs> that was kind of like finalization of this matrix. So at the moment, uh, like again, uh, if somebody knows anything else, please tell me. But so far this uh, matrix covers uh, like everything, what, uh, what we can do. So let's, uh, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, so let's uh, look at what is done uh, for each of them. So in first uh, case, uh, false, false, it is uh, each schema is created uh, by um, like database owner, uh, and uh, this uh, schema is created with two users, uh, read uh, only and read write, and um, they are, the roles are granted, uh, sorry, the privileges are granted to these roles. So that's like classic. Everybody who does security on schema level does this. Um, so next one, uh, again, uh, database admin uh, creates, uh, like users admin, uh, creates schemas. Uh, for each schema, 
it creates uh, the schema owner role, and same story creates a read only role and read write role. Uh, um, and again, uh, here the owner is the schema owner. So in this situation, um, we create account, and uh, account has uh, like some privileges, uh, privileges to create schemas, uh, again, via security defined functions, and it also creates uh, read only and read write users. And this last one, uh, we, uh, each schema is created by account owner, but for each schema, they create separate schema owner, and all the default permissions are like cascading in this manner. And in this case, uh, the account owner can do everything with their schemas, uh, but uh, the schema owners can do uh, like uh, can do everything within their schemas. Oof. Okay. Uh, so, what are the functions doing? So the Honestly, the biggest challenge for people to adopt it when they realize what advantages it gives them, they love it. But um, uh, the problem is that they need to call functions. And again, I would love it not to be functions. I would love it to be like you can switch to some flag or like option on create schema, create table, whatever, and like be happy. But anyway, uh, so uh, create schema roles as first function. So uh, whoever has a permission to create it, they can, uh, this function will create schema, uh, it will create um, application user, it can create user and password at the same time, doesn't have to. It can create a schema owner if uh, the security level is with schema owner and can uh, create the password. And um, it might designate it to specific account, again, if account is applicable. It is uh, defaulted to the current user and you cannot really change it, I will tell in a second why. Uh, so um, again, every, uh, the call is the same, everything inside is driven by the existing security matrix. So which roles are created, which not. Drop schema roles. So remember, you cannot drop <laughs> anything without dropping <laughs> all the privileges. And the worst thing is, if you drop schema, which you can, but then you have all these remaining users, and you cannot recreate the schema because you cannot recreate these users. So uh, uh, instead of drop schema, you call drop schema users, and you pass schema name as a parameter. So uh, what it does, it revokes all the associated roles from the users, uh, and it drops this roles and it drops the schema. So all of these things, just clean, uh, clean drop. Um, then assignment functions. So you can assign uh, the schema owner user, you can pass schema name, the username and the password. So here is what it does. If it's a new user, it creates the user with a password. If it's an existing user, it will uh, like, if you do not pass the password, you just assign the role. If it is existing user and you pass the password, it will change the password. So that's how it works, pretty much. Um, uh, so same for the application user. So same story, but for the application. And obviously there is one function underneath of it, but uh, our users do not need to know this one function with the rules at all. And uh, for read-only user, again, same story, uh, it's underneath is the same function. And uh, also there are all these revoke functions. So same, you can grant role and you can revoke role. And again, everything is done kind of in a clean way. So we do not drop users because remember, we do not know what this else these users do. Because uh, you know, there are some creative people who actually reuse the users. So we're like doing it safely. All right. Um, so, uh, and additional security defined functions, again, those are the functions which are like very, very, very needed. So first of all, select all privileges. So if anybody in the previous lives ever saw my diff uh, project, uh, I um, like create uh, these differences between different um, instances. So this function is copy from the diff and it does list uh, all pri privileges uh, kind of like disassembled to atomic level. 
So no matter how the privileges are granted by roles or directly, so this will list everything, everything, everything. So it's a good um, self-check. Uh, and uh, the other two are uh, seen blocking processes and PG start activities. So why we need this? Because uh, by default, again, we are not giving people super user privileges. Uh, otherwise, you can only see your own SQL. Uh, and uh, if you um, like run it, uh, you will see if it's not you, there will be no SQL and uh, displayed because of security, and uh, admin wants to know who did this. So uh, this function works as a security definer, uh, as uh, like Postgres, and it can uh, display all the code of the queries. So that's um, very important in our uh, situation because uh, you know, in the queries, you can see all the data. And uh, you know what? Again, working in trading, I see all the data which I severely want to unsee, but I, I have to see. So, like, you know, so no, nobody except of their admin like, is entitled to see things. Um, all right. So uh, core details. Um, again, it's no magic. Uh, so how I am forcing privileges. Again, that is the part of the event trigger. Uh, so when you create any object, it's not one create, it's whole bunch of creates. Because when you create table, it's create table, uh, create constraint, uh, create index if you have some primary key uh, like, uh, or unique key, and a whole bunch of things. Uh, so event trigger on create goes through all the objects which are created, changes ownerships and permissions, when it makes sense, because there are lots of little things like you do not change ownership on index, but index needs to be created after ownership is already changed. So everything is like done inside this uh, trigger. So no matter who you are, no matter how many times you forgot to switch to correct role, if you own this role, if you have a right to create objects in the schema, uh, the permissions will be, uh, the ownerships and permissions will be assigned correctly using the event trigger. Now, how I know that you have a right to do this? That's how I know. I, that's like, again, part of the code which, uh, that it's standard recursion which identifies which role do you have. Plus, if you were smart and explicitly switched to the right role, <laughs> which you do not have, but like you know you should. Uh, so uh, this uh, basically returns true if you are allowed to do things in this uh, schema. Now, uh, uh, another thing is, uh, so that is like you are allowed, uh, but how you know you are allowed? Oh, we have the security matrix, we have uh, the account owners, uh, so I need to know who you are, but now you are about to go to the security definer function. In security definer function, when you are inside, you already Postgres, so how I know who you were before you come? So I actually have non-security defined function on top, which passes me a current user. And then, okay, if I'm allowed to do security defined, how can I make sure that I am not, nobody calls it directly? And for this, I am actually checking the stack. So security defined function can be only called, not standalone, but from non-security defined function. This way, I know that I captured who you are correctly. So, and then I know are you allowed not just to execute the security defined function, but to execute it on this particular object. So you uh, cannot drop somebody's else schema. You cannot uh, create objects in somebody's else schema. You can, cannot assign new user to somebody's else schema. You can only do it as you, and by the way, Postgres as well. <laughs> so like, it's like disappointment for our DBAs, but yeah. All right. So uh, that is like, again, very briefly how it works. And I know it was not enough code. Uh, the package is pretty gigantic. Uh, so uh, what is next about this? So first of all, um, uh, users are keeping asking me about reporting. And although I have this uh, list of privileges, but um, it's on my backlog to uh, create reporting, which tells you, OK, this database uh, has these accounts, these schemas, and those are the people who like 
have this role. So uh, nice uh, JSON uh, is due. It, it will happen. <laughs> uh, unit testing, uh, you know what? Nobody wants. So first of all, people do not understand that you need unit tests. Uh, it's like the whole big thing. Nobody wants to do this. Not like I love doing unit tests, but with this complexity, I uh, actually had to do this. I am like 80% done with unit tests. Uh, uh, you know, it, it turns out each time that I did not cover some of the cases. I have like about 100 tests for each of the versions of this matrix, and it's still uh, not enough. I'm still finding cases. So hopefully it will be done soon. Uh, and uh, conversion automation. So if the big thing is that we have customers who are not on security framework, and now we're making it as a company-wide standard, and uh, we want to automate um, the conversion from God knows what, like literally, like you cannot imagine what, what, what can happen, uh, to a proper security framework. So far, it's severely manual process because, again, uh, people are so creative. They are like schemas owned by login users. Then you need to do several things. There are objects which are owned by different users within one schema. So fun part is I try to kind of automate it, create functions. So when you have partition table and partitions are like several thousand and we have it in honest to God, it's legit in many cases, then uh, I'm like running off DDL logs in transaction. So I actually, before I do this, I need to investigate how many schemas have partition tables, and then I need to <laughs> change ownership because, yes, all partitions ownership is separate. Uh, so, so far, it's like very, very loosely automated process. So, um, that's uh, my backlog. Again, most importantly, I would love to have uh, lots of these things as part of Postgres. Like, to summarize, I do not think Postgres should revoke things which do not exist silently. I think there should be some hint. I would love to have an option. I created the schema. Please make sure all objects in the schema are owned by schema owner. I would love to. Um, that is a minimum, you know. Uh, the, I, uh, I, I talked to many people. They already told me that preventing from granting privileges directly to user is not working since we did what we did with roles uh, and users. So, um, and I know that you can create something as no login role, and then you can just add a password. You are login role. Great. Um, so, like, yeah, uh, no, no salvation there. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, at least the way we're doing it now, it helps. And each time uh, any uh, of our internal customers kind of like, Oh my gosh, what's happening? We like do not know, like we lost permission here, like permission not well granted, whatever, like, okay. Switch to this. This uh, framework gives some sanity to DBAs on support, because uh, at least we know what to expect. And again, we know that nobody, even other DBA on support, who does not know. I, I <laughs> got so many calls from DBAs on support. Why have this error? <laughs> Because you are not allowed to do things directly. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Uh, uh, so that's uh, that's it. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, hopefully it was interesting. Uh, and uh, questions. Yeah. Questions. Um, and to you first. Hello, hello. Um, as as far as uh, visibility into. Um, the issues you you uh, presented. Um, do you or have you ever considered using um, like a threat modeling tool or other command line tools to, um, to identify permission issues or other issues with databases, like Microsoft threat modeling tool or? Uh, no, would it work? Uh, no. Okay, so permission issues uh, happen. So the thing is, like, uh, everything what I demonstrated, I came across when I was trying to convert people and was trying to switch permissions. I found so many things, I, like, don't want to know how many I found. So uh, and then uh, the question is, like, how you... Uh, th that's a big problem because there is no, like, command in PSQL which allows you to list all permissions. You can, uh, there are some SQLs like this recursion, which allows you to list all roles. 
but that's pretty much it. You cannot uh, really list uh, all atomic permissions. So um, I have this div package is open source. So again, it's one heading, Postgres, Hattie, D, GitHub. Uh, there's div package, D-I-F-F. And um, I have it there. So that's a function which you can like deploy. Okay. on your database, uh, it's not an extension, uh, and uh, it will list you all, all permissions. So um, other things, like maybe there is something else. I'm listing all I found, what is like <laughs> inconsistent. <laughs> huh? Uh, slides uh, will be, okay, if they won't be there within the next hour, you can find me and like beat me, okay? I, uh, I, I was making changes like until this morning because I forgot to adjust to display slides. <laughs> Do, does either you or the Chicago group that you work with have any fabulous GitHub repos where we can borrow some of your code? Uh, sorry, say it again. What was uh, what, what, what we do? Do you or the Chicago group have a GitHub repo where we can borrow code samples? Uh, okay, so this one is not uh, open source because I developed it for the company and I still need to figure out what I will outsource. Like, outsource. What, um, all my open source projects are in my uh, repo. I have five open source projects. Again, HTD, um, I'm, I'm visible, okay, <laughs> so you'll find me. <laughs> I, I will try to open source, like I, at the moment it's proprietary code, but I'm planning to open source as much as I can. Okay, at the moment it's not. So for the security piece, did you reference any like NIST or CIS or any security related templates for to to secure your uh, your module mm -hmm. to so use what, that in your module what wait uh, no 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 okay. no 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 it's uh, all uh, like uh, imp empiric <laughs> So pretty much, you know, like uh, first uh, security scheme is everybody using, and I started to use it. I used my free previous uh, jobs in startups, and then all of a sudden I learned that people need way more, and I just started to <laughs> come up with models, and then I generalized them. So, so far, all I have within this, like, 280 databases fits in one of these four. Do you have any strong feelings towards um, role-level security? Scare, scary things about security? Yeah, how do you feel about role-level security? Uh, 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 RLS, role-level security, where it um, restricts, role, uh, okay. the, which restricts oh, which roles, yeah. yeah. So, okay, um, I can tell how I feel, because people whom I want to hear this are not here, but I will tell anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is one of these things when uh, people who uh, came up with this, uh, they uh, do not know how people use Postgres in the real world, uh, because uh, it's like not needed. It's like, like not needed 100%, because uh, they are not users who are sitting and typing commands. There are applications, uh, and uh, most applications, like if we have uh, like one uh, user per application, it's already huge, plus very often it's like one user for all applications. Mm. So forget about this. So I think it just uh, like one of those things when I, I try to be a voice of reality here, you know? So I'm not a contributor, <laughs> I'm nobody. <laughs> So, so then, do you think it's a bad idea to have many different users accessing the same same Google database, where maybe? No, no, no. It's great. Okay. It's, no, it's a great idea to uh, separate by users, but mm -hmm. the world does not work this way. Again, I'm uh, in the real world. I'm a realist. I know that there is ORM. No, my, no matter how much I hate ORM, ORM is there to stay. No matter how I hate many things which are out there. They are here to stay, and uh, my goal is to assist application developers to do what they need without creating hazard in the database. That's uh, all, all I'm trying to do. Uh, so, like, uh, role level security is something which, like, I was always wondering uh, what was the idea behind this, because it's, like, uh, absolutely not, like, applicable to real life. I actually have customers who use it, so... All right. Just okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. happy if somebody does. You okay. Know? Awesome. Any other questions? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I think so. Thank you, Thank you so much.